we bid you a warm welcome to woven tv this moment uh this is woven tv the youtube channel for my wovenwords.com if you are visiting for the very first time please click on the subscribe button down below so that you have access to all our content as soon as we upload them we always share stories and uh, histories and content, lifestyle content about Yoruba culture and African culture at large. Today we'll be talking about a town, a mysterious town in Oyo State. When you hear the name, the name will scare you and you will think otherwise. But there is actually a story behind it which we would like to share this morning. And it's the story of Iluaje. When you say Iluaje, Iluaje means town of witches. So when you hear that, actually the first thing that will come to your mind is that, okay, this is the town where we have lots of witches, but no, that's not the case. There is a story behind it, and uh, after getting uh, the contents, the information from our verified sources, we would like to share that this morning. So let's get right in. We'll be talking about Iluaje, like I said earlier. Iluaje is just, uh, it's very close to Fiditis in Oyo State. So it's very close to Fiditi and when you say Iluaje, it is a small town. It, is, it has vast lands located between Ilora and Jubili towns in the Afijio local government of Oyo State in Nigeria. Uh, you know, semantically, Iluaje is uh, literally a town of prosperity in sales or business transactions. However, history as a affected it in some ways because of the weird homophonic nomenclature of Iluaje following the intervention of Akinyolu, an herbalist, you know, no, you can say a priest from the town, who cast a divination for a late alaf in regarding a prince who was missing at that time. According to one of our sources, they said in the late 80s, there used to be a signboard in Fiditi that points to the path to the village, Iluaje. The signboard had an inscription which says, Way to Iluaje, home of science. Way to Iluaje, home of science. Lots of people used to fear indigenous of Iluaje because it was said that every man in Iluaje is born of a witch and every woman in Iluaje is a witch. But that is not the case. Now, that is just not the case. But if it's not the case, why do they call the place Iluaje? How did they get to that uh, conclusion? Why is the, the, town, the name of the town called Iluaje? So let's start now. Before we continue, if this is your first time, welcome to Woven TV. If you've not subscribed, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can have access to all our content as soon as we upload them. Some sources claim that it was when Allah Finladi Bolu was on the throne. Why some claim that it was when Allah Fin Adeyemi Kiji, that's Adeyemi Adeniro, the father of the, the uh, recently late Allah Fin Adeyemi the third. They said that's when he was on the throne. Now, I know some of you already understand that in Oyo town we have uh, royal families. We have the Ladigbulus and we have the Adeyemis. So some said claim that it was when the Ladigbulu the second was there, and some claim it was when the Allah Fin Adeyemi the second was there. But either way, it was when one of the Alafins was there. So the king of one of these Alafins was uh, missing. In fact, scrap it. Alafin of Oyodri, Oyoyile, that's Oyo, hold your empire, was not a king. He was an emperor, a deity. Even up till date, Alafin of Oyo's power is paramount. Death, the father. Death, the mother. Second in command, only to the gods, Iku, Baba, Yeye, Alashe, Ikeji, Orisha. When the son of such a, an entity gets missing, of course, it is it is something that you know everybody is concerned about and everybody is running up and down. Hunters were commissioned to look for the son. You understand? Every nook and con corner of Oyo's town was, you know, Oyo's empire was being searched. Every crevice was checked. All e tops were visited, yet a laughing son couldn't be found. Like the shepherd who had 99 sheep but was despondent about the lone missing sheep, the father was heartbroken about his missing son. A balist were consulted from Oyo to Ife. 
magicians were recruited recruited from Egbado to Ilaje, yet no one could help find the missing son. Kabiesi was sad. Olori was pained. The Oyomisi were not happy. The king's household in confusion. The whole empire was so gloomy. Then, on one market day, by noon, an old tattered abalist called Akinyolu landed in the market square asking for directions to the Allah Afin's palace. The market woman looked at him with disdain as a result of his dirty and wrinkled look. After much hado, Akinyolu was led to the palace. He was restricted by protocol to see the king, Yekuba Bagyoye himself. The palace guards inquire why he is there to see the Allah, Allah Afin. He insisted the matter is only for the Allah of his ears. He was turned back until one of the guards told the others that they should seek audience with the king and ask for his consent. You know, as the king and chiefs were in the open court deliberating on the issue, Akin Yolu strolled into the palace court with his Akboifa, that was his oracle bag. Everyone looked at him in Askans. Wondering who is this? They said, Baba ki lefe, ki lewa shenibi, ta leferi, which means, Baba, what do you want? Why are you here? What do you want to see? Can't you see we are in the middle of a serious issue? What do you think you have? Akin Yolu was not moved by all these questions they were asking him. He prostrated like the proper Yoruba man he was. He said, Kabi is you. I am a Babalao from a remote and secluded part of the outskirts of Oyo town. I have come to help you with your missing son. The region of Iluaje at that time had no name. You understand? So he couldn't even mention where he's from, he was from. He just said from the outskirts of the Oyo town. But when he said this, the chiefs were amused. They just laughed. Ki, 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 ki. <sighs> Babalao from Sena climbs have tried and failed. Onishegons with renowned reputations have attempted and fumbled. Who do you think you are? Please get out. Kabiesu was just looking at him in a, in a non interested way. Not to treat Akin Yolu in a rude manner. Kabiesu asked him to go ahead, but he should make it snappy fast fast don't waste my time so you know the 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 babala who brought out his okmoifa and said you want your okmo ugbo e yon okmo ugbo olu mo lotun olu kawan lo si ari okmo ita orun and so on he did his stuffs he did it the way he should do it and he said Kabisi, you need no stress yourself. In seven days' time, when the sun is directly over the head and the man stands upon his own shadow, get five chiefs to sit under the Igemi, a sheep butter tree, that's Igemi, at the eastern border of the town. They should be dressed in white and they should continuously clap their hands with Demit Kali in unison. On the 21st clap, the king's son would have reached them and he would ask them for water. <laughs> After saying this, the chiefs were so clear, Akin Yolu must be a madman. The chiefs just concluded in their mind, you know. <laughs> but you can't uh, just discard that. When you are looking for something, you, you try every means possible to get that thing. So, you know, you just do anything to find a lost son. So, though the recommendation of Akin Yolu was crazy, the Allah thing still carried it out, like he said. He asked the chiefs to come, just like Akin Yolu said after making the divination. They whole wore white clothes, they, they sat where he asked them to sat, and you know, where he asked them to sit, and he started clapping. And lo and behold, on the 21st clap, the king's son came out. When the son was brought to the king and the event narrated, the Allah thing was said to have asked, What sort of herbalist who makes divinations that comes true like a witch proclamation is this? 
where does he live the people answered that he lived by a forest patch at the outskirts of Oyo town the king instructed that Akinyol would be, cr- be clothed in fine apparel and be treated like the important guest he was the king told little to king yolu to ask for anything just anything he would be ready to oblige and answer to his request but king yolu said your highness all i ask for at my advancing age is that i go back to my forest in peace you may choose amongst your slaves to follow me back to the forest to live our own life there the king ob- obliged and gave king yolu gifts and instructions to be, to be given about 30 slaves to join him on his journey back to the forest. Akin Yolu was made the ballet of his old uh, settlement, now a thriving tri- town. As he was called Aje by the townsmen, so was his domain named Iluaje, which literally means the witch town. For a long time, when people keep calling him Aje, you know, because of what the Alafin said. Abala who knew to differ BRJ, who is that abalist that's making divinations like a witch. So for a very long time, when people want to describe the area where the abalists live, they would say Ilu Adifashe BRJ, the town of who divines or foretells proclamation like a witch. Over time, people just started shortening it to Iluaje. They omitted the Adifashe, you know, Adifashe BRJ, turned to AJ. So that was how the town got her name, and Akin Yolu ruled as the first Alaje of Iluaje. Just like you know, different uh, towns has a way the way they got their names. Just like Ubumosho, Uburi Elemosho. So this one is Adifashe Biaje, Iluadifashe Biaje, Iluaje. I I hope that uh, is clear enough. So that's that about Iluaje. Before we conclude, I would like to talk about what is currently going on with Iluaje because I reached out to some people there and they gave us updates. So that Iluaje is still existing till date in Afi Geo local government of Oyo State. In fact, I met a woman that claimed she's from there. To some people, it has been opined that because of the air feeling associated with this town as a result of the name, many including Government officials who felt that witches would kill them if they agreed to work in the town have since been keeping the town at bay in terms of relationship. So, you know, they stand aloof. They're not really engaging the town as they should. In order to remove the stigma, you know, when you hear Iluaje, you'll be scared. You'll be, you'll be afraid of going there. Uh, maybe they will kill you. One time, the head of the town later christened the town Iluaje. So, but even at that, it still didn't stand. People are already used to Iluaje, and there is a way you, when you call something that is interesting, you won't want to drop that name for something that is maybe less boring. So, the Iluaje did not stand. So, the people still call it Iluaje. The social political implication of the popular name, Land of Witches, had nevertheless stuck on the town, thereby getting investors and even philanthropists scared of having anything to do with the town at all everybody's running away from it the town is peaceful and the atmosphere is serene with the inhabitants harmoniously living with many fulani people that settled there carrying uh, carrying on their um, cattle rearing business as well as farming Fam- there are lots of fulanis there that are just rearing their cattle and they've been there for years However, many social and infrastructural facilities are lacking in the town. It is one of the communities suffering from the common social amenities like pipe bomb water, electricity, educational facilities, as well as medical facilities, among others. So that's that about Iluaje. A big thanks to Mr. Salam Daudu Adewale for pictures that he got for, for, for us from Iluaje. Thank you, Pa Adegola, for giving us a good narration. Also, a big thanks to a page on Facebook, Yoruba Myth, for giving us detailed information about uh, Iluaje. This is where we will stop for today. Till we see you again next week. This is Woven TV and I am Johnson Ade Okwande. Please subscribe to Woven TV and visit our website www.myworldwords.com. Thank you for your time. Have a blessed day.